I bumped into Andrew on social media as we do in this game, and I was like, oh, this is what's happening here. Like, first of all, he's the epic mortgage guy. So, like, all of a sudden, you're immediately like, okay, like, who are you, the epic mortgage guy? I got to get to know this. And I started watching content, watching what he was putting out, and I was like, uh oh, there's something really, really, really cool here. And so, without further ado, let's bring on epic mortgage guy, Andrew Katie. Friends and professionals, our next topic is the power of digital connections with this guy, Andrew Katie. Now, for those of you that don't follow this guy, you're missing out. When I first saw him online, I knew he was doing something special. Something was happening because when he would post, when he would share his message, he would have a resounding audience jumping in and collaborating with him. And, and it's taken his business to new heights. So let's bring him on and talk about what he's doing and the power of digital connections. Oh, entry music, bro. Entry music. We got like got walk on music for you, dude. I don't even know what to say right now, man. How are you? I have to use the restroom, but we're gonna push through, dude. It's so good to see you, man. Look, look at the background and the epic, dude. You're crushing it right now. Hey, even have proper softbox lighting. You know, we got this stuff set up, dude. I'm I'm jealous. So I want to dive right in with you, man, because you've done something that I have never seen anybody do yet in the industry. And and I was so impa- I was so impressed by it that I was like, man, I need you to bring you on and talk about the power of digital connections because when I learned that you had spent two years of your business cultivating a digital connection ecosystem universe, I was like, this is the power, you know. And and so first, Andrew, real quick, share with everybody how your production's going because I know we're all having good years. If you're having a really good year. Like, share with everybody that. Let's let's let it, let's let everyone know who you are. Yeah. So year to date, I'm um, I. I'm about 25 days away from ellipsing last year's volume. Um, so last year I did 200 units. Uh, somewhere in mid-July, I'm going to close out my 200 unit for this year. And the crazy, crazy thing is, is 92, 93% of my business is purchased this year. Uh, so this isn't, you know, a spike from refis. This is a lot of organic, a lot of referral-based business, almost entirely driven through social media on my end. Yeah, so that, that's where all of a sudden I was like, holy crap, <coughs> that's a lot of production, but it's all coming through your digital efforts. And yeah, so, I mean, I, mean I, I, I was, yeah, I, I haven't, I'm not the guy that that is, you know, dialing real estate agents, hey, can I buy you coffee? You know, yes, I did that five years ago when I got into the business. I bought a lot of coffee and a lot of lunches and ultimately a lot of beers, but once the audience on social media began to actually to kind of grow and turn into really just a referral base. Yes. I have probably in the last 18 to 24 months, I haven't taken anybody to lunch unless they've called me to ask me to go to lunch. Um, frankly, I, I just don't have time for it unless they're asking me. I, I am desperately seeking ways to hire more people right now and not <laughs> just seek more business right now, which is awesome. So you share it, you say that, and everyone out there is like, holy crap, I want that. Like, how, how do I get that? How do I do that? And and you had to earn this seat at the table. You had to put time and sweat and tears into it. And so for everybody that's listening, like how many in Facebook, like let's just use that platform, how many connections do you have with real estate professionals on Facebook? Uh, yeah, so so I am uh, I'm capped out or close to being capped out on my friends list. I removed about 200 uh, lender friends that have added me so I can make room for more real estate agents. Uh, but, but, you know, there's no exact math, but I figure somewhere between the, the number of 3,800 and 4,000 of my friends on Facebook are, are real estate agents, either specifically in my local markets or in Florida, Georgia, where I'm doing business. So, you know, for everyone else who just heard that, like I did the first time and I was like, oh, this guy cracked the code. Like, like, cause that, by the way, that takes effort. That takes tremendous amounts of effort. It does. And, and how did you get that? How did you create that? When did you start and what did you, how did you get that level of influence? So where, where I began with this whole thing was when I got into the mortgage business, I got in and I truly had like no mentor. I was um, a friend of mine brought me in the business who was an executive vice president of a mortgage company. And he basically put me in a branch, sat me in front of Encompass and was like, hey, go originate loans. And so I found another friend of mine who was really good and we kind of collaborated. And so I had no connections. And so what I did is I spent about eight months 
pounding the pavement and went to 25 open houses every single weekend yes. for about eight months. I know what that feels like. And just walk in, grab business cards, shake hands, get out. And then I would add these real estate agents on Facebook. And, and what I found is when I add that first realtor on Facebook, if I haven't met them face to face, there's a very low probability they're going to add me back. But if I've met them at an open house, I could quickly in a matter of seven, eight months amass 500 realtors on Facebook pretty easily. And then when I would go to my suggested friends list, yep. other real estate agents, now we have 75 mutual friends. So when I would click that add friend button, boom, I get added back. Now when I go on there and it's like, oh, there's a real estate agent, I have 1300 mutual friends with them. Of course, they're going to add me back. So it is a slow build and it takes a lot of effort, um, but it's also you know managing the content you're putting out um, and, and the quality of the content, but also staying away from hot topic is issues, uh, keeping myself very, very, very um, politically agnostic, you know, right down the middle of the road. There's some things I just will not touch on my Facebook. Well, and we can get into pitfalls and that'd be a fun conversation, but I want everyone to hear, really hear this. Like what you did was incredibly, had incredible foresight because you built a digital community before it was cool. It takes time. And like you said, then, then it snowballs. Then you got like 75 mutual friends and then you don't have to meet them face to face. They're going to accept it. Um, and now all of a sudden you have this megaphone opportunity. And now when you put out a piece of content, put out a piece of video, put out anything at all, you have this audience that's already there waiting for you. Correct. Yeah. I, I, I just posted about an hour ago on my Facebook and I, right before we went live, I looked at it. I'm, I'm close to a hundred engagements in just under an hour on just a screenshot of an email that I got. Like the engagement level is just, is just always there, but it's also making sure that we're not posting a rant about a football game because you're going to kill your, your Facebook engagement when you start posting this. Every post I do has to be very thought out. The time of day I'm going to post it, the content I'm going to post, it, it has to be something that you're not just arbitrarily doing, but rather planning to get done successfully. You know, I know everybody's hearing this through your conversation and, and, and through your intent on this, but like you radically transformed your career, like radically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it will be, you know, what I'm looking at this year will be very likely somewhere in the neighborhood of a, of a 75 to $90 million a year at 95% purchase. And that's coming off of a $45 million a year last year. It just, it's so fun for me to watch because there are so many different ways to the customer now. And this has been the theme throughout the collab today is that there's all these opportunities from people from podcasting to Instagram to what you've done on Facebook connections to create this opportunity. Um, so here's a question for you right now live. Great advice with a one-two punch of live networking and digital connecting. Um, man, if you're in COVID land today, right? So you kind of have to put yourself there. It's hard, it's hard to meet that first connection. Um, you know, as a pro in this space, how do you, how do you, how do you tackle it today? Or how do you, how do you handle, you're in a different space, um, but how, how do you handle it? Yeah. So, you know, it's something that I'm not necessarily doing. So, you know, I kind of can come off as hypocritical in saying this, be, but I'm also not doing it because I, number one, just don't have time. And number two, yeah. don't know if I want that much more business right now. But if, if I was in that space where I'm like, boom, I need to grow today yep. and COVID's keeping me inside, I would do a Tuesday 5 p.m. Bring your own beer happy hour on Zoom. And I would do the same thing on Friday afternoon. And I would do it twice a week. And I would put it out there and I would get 10 to 12 to 15 real estate agents every single twice a week into my Zoom. I would keep it relative, keep it funny. We talk about wines and beers and what everybody's drinking and basically build a social connection over Zoom because that's that's the best opportunity we have short of face to face right now, in my opinion. Dude. Unbelievably cool. So let's do this. Let me ask this question because I know people are going to relate to this. Um, everyone can hear build your build your audience, and then they can be like, "Okay, I know what to do. I'll go out and I'll and I'll, I'll build my audience." But then once you have the audience like you do, that doesn't mean you instantly get success. No, no. So you have a very intentional content strategy. You've been you've been kind of talking about it. You know, stay away from these you know topics that will take you down the drain. But like, share with everybody like, what is your content strategy today? So my content strategy is. First and foremost is to make, remain real mm -hmm. and very true to myself. Uh, I do not want to be a talking head of mortgages. Um, I don't want to be the guy that only gets out there and talks about it. 
I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer that people in my market want to see me as an absolute kick-ass mortgage professional, but also a kick-ass husband, kick-ass father. They right. want to see they want to see pictures of my dog. They want to see me at the beach on a Saturday with my kids. They want to see awesome mortgage content. And then they also want a lot of comedy, especially in the world we're in right now. If we can do something to put a smile on someone's face, whether it's the post I did a few minutes ago about a client who emailed me and saying he's putting his home shopping on hold due to a collapsing housing market, people want something to laugh at right now. So if I can interject laughter, comedy into their life while I'm also putting mortgage related content in front of their face, it just is a, it's just ultimately a method of top of mind awareness for me. So my, my ultimate strategy, I have uh, professional videos that I've done that are on a cycle where they're posted yeah. every day or every other day. Yep. And I'm basically in between filling the gaps with pictures of my kids, pictures of my dog, and then the occasional rant once about every 45 to 60 it's days, a good, like rant. A good rant. People, I'm the, I'm a big believer that negativity will turn people away in the long run. If all I do is get out there and I attack and I attack and I attack, eventually it's going to turn people away Yeah, because people are attracted to a better demeanor than always someone who's attacking. However, when someone who is a positive person, a high energy person is, is always out there and then comes out with an angry rant, where you dare say the word shit in it. Oh no. Now you've got everyone's attention. Now everybody's like, oh my gosh, this guy who's normally calm, cool, and collected is off his chain. I'm gonna listen to his videos. So it's you know, it's a cycle of of family dog business rant funny, family dog business rant funny, and it's just a cycle on, on social media. What I want everyone to hear on that is that it's okay to be a human and show all aspects of your humanity. And Andrew, you do a great job of that. And I've seen, I've read some of your rants and, and, and enjoy them. And I think they're, I think they're fun. Cause it's, all of a sudden you're like, Oh, finally someone's saying it. Like no one else is saying it. And this guy's saying it, but I, it's okay to be funny. And it's okay to have humor. It's okay to be real. I, I once read an article that, you know, if you, if you're actually blessed to be funny, then you, you actually have an advantage because you change someone's whole physio physiology when you're funny, like they laugh, they, they, they get happier. They immediately like you more. And it's okay to be human. And there's a lot of people putting out content when they don't show their humanity. They, they put yeah, their food a, on. And there's a lot of a lot of mortgage people that I even see and connect with on social media that that are disingenuous. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not here to attack anyone personally, obviously. However, be who you are. If you're not the funny guy, don't be the funny guy. Yep. Because you're going to connect with your base of whatever you are. And, and if, if you're trying to be me when you are not me, it's going to miserably fail. Yeah. The majority of people will see through it and yeah. it's not going to turn out how you want it. So just be real, be who you are, be unapologetically you, and you're going to connect. For every one person I turn off with my rant, I'm going to turn on two people that will follow exactly in line with me because they're my people. So yeah. be who you are, D don't, don't fake it. It's Everybody sees through that stuff. So guys, what I love about Andrew is his, not only his authenticity to be real, but it's also his his hard work and intentionality. Like you don't get 4,000 realtors connected to you without hard work. You know, you heard him, you know, he was very quick in rambling off like, you know, rant, dog, funny, you know, professional, but you, you realize, oh crap, like he's running this. He's so used to it. He has this such intense strategy around what he's doing that it becomes second nature to him where he just rips it off. I mean, I've already got my post in my head of what I'm posting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Yep. Like, I, and it, I won't post it at 8 a.m. I'm going to post it at 9 a.m. specifically because the target audience I'm looking for is going to be at their computers or at their desks or at their phones, typically between 8 and 9 a.m. Yep. If I post that same post at 11 a.m. or at 7 a.m., it'll get half the engagement. So you you told me something that was new to me. Um, what's this? What's what's how do you leverage Facebook Messenger? Yeah, so Facebook Messenger is a is a phenomenal tool. Um, so let's say Alec and I are connected on Facebook, mm -hmm. and Alec occasionally sees my posts, but doesn't necessarily see everything I do. Um, if Alec is a say he's a real estate referral partner that I want to work with or potentially could work with, I could text Alec and say, "Hey, how's everything going? Happy Monday! Hopefully your day's rocking and rolling." Yep, and that does nothing for my social media. 
But if I would send that same message over Facebook Messenger to Alec, the moment Alec responds to that message, even with a thumbs up, it now changes Facebook's strategy or its, its algorithm of the friendship that Alec and I have, and it brings it to a more personal level. And now Alec is guaranteed to see my next three Facebook posts I post immediately in his Facebook wall. So rather than texting people, I've gotten to this habit of just shooting a message over Facebook Messenger. Yep. Hey, I got this contract in. Hopefully everything's going well. We're on it. We'll take care of it. That's a text message. But all of us are on Facebook Messenger just as much as we're on text message. Yes, we and are. if I can cr increase my engagement at the same time of communicating something I would communicate anyways, why the hell wouldn't I do that? Oh, it's incredible. And it's, I think it's a, it's a, missed, it's a missed opportunity. It is. It, it's it's a huge missed opportunity, and it's something that that a lot of people just don't simply grasp or grasp, or they feel um, maybe like they're getting too personal. But I don't think there's any more personal than my my phone dinging their phone. If I'm willing to text them, why the heck wouldn't I Facebook message them? So, what other misses are people are are there? What other missed opportunities are there that you think people should be um, huge, 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 huge missed opportunity would be when real estate agents invite you to like their business page. Love it. Just my favorite moment. I used to go through and I would just like their business page because I want them to get that little pop up that says, Andrew Katie likes your business page. Absolutely. And then what I decided I was going to do is I unliked all of them. And then I waited for people to start liking and requesting me again because they will because they eventually just go invite their whole friends list. Right. Right. And then what I do is, is I send them a Facebook message on personal to personal. And I say, hey, Alec, thanks for inviting me to like your Facebook page. I'd be super happy to do that for you. Here's the link to my Facebook page. If you want to do the same, I'd love to have an opportunity to do business together. So now, number one, I'm acknowledging their request. I'm requesting that they like me, but then I'm also doing it over Facebook Messenger, which is going to increase their engagement of the content they see of my posts. God, it's just like, I love the intentionality of that. I love the intentionality because it takes time to write that message. You could have easily just liked their stuff and move on. Yeah, it's the, it, that, that's the easy route, but I'm not in this game for 100 million. I'm not in this game for 200 million. I don't know where my, where my ending point is, but there's, there's no level of just like satisfaction for me. I'm in this game to play for the long haul and to push as hard as I can to make uh, to make an empire I can lead my kids, to make an empire I can hire in and bring people in to create I'd like to have a billion dollar mortgage team someday. Dude, and, you, and you're going to. I have no doubt, dude. If you keep putting in the effort and the time, there's no doubt you'll get to where you want to go. So let's do this. We got a, um, like 12 minutes. Um, if someone was new to Facebook, and by the way, there's a lot of them. I know that sounds weird that you're like, I've never, they've never started a business page on Facebook. Maybe they got a personal page. They got a few friends on there. Um, and they came to you for advice because you inspired them now. They're like, holy shit, I'm missing the boat. Um, what do you, how do you set them up? What do you, what do you, what do you say to them? Uh, create a Facebook business page primarily for, for just people being able to search you. Like if you Google search Andrew Katie, if you just search Andrew Katie, I dominate page one and page two and number four or five, somewhere in there is my Facebook business page with 57 five-star reviews. They don't do five-star reviews anymore, but you want that ability for people to search. You create a business page. I don't, I rarely even post on my business page because I don't think business pages quite have the engagement they used to. Um, I would say immediately uh, go through if you're if you're looking to grow social media, spend two to three to four to five days, depending on how long you've been on Facebook. Go through your previous content and delete a lot of it. Uh. Delete a lot of your previous content. I don't care if you're Democratic or Republican or how strong your views are on things. There are some topics that if you're seeking to grow business through social media, yes, it's a free country. Yes, you have every right to post whatever you want, but be forewarned that you're going to lose 50% of your potential business because of your Facebook post about a president. Yep. So guns, religion, abortion, <laughs> drugs, politics have zero place on Facebook. If someone, if I post something and someone comments something political on my on my Facebook wall, I respond and say, please remove politics off my wall. I'm not doing it. Oh, race, I'll add race to it. Absolutely. We all have our opinions, we all have our views, but if you're seeking to grow and engage with people on social media, you're going to 
alienate 50 to sometimes greater than 50% of your audience by having strong public views on these things. And if you don't want to go that route, then don't use social media as your platform to grow your business. But I'm telling you, you're missing the boat on it. Yeah. So go through, delete a lot of your stuff. Stay very, very positive. Stay motivating. Don't always be in attack mode. Don't always be in this mode of, of negative, of always posting about your problems. People get very, very turned off by that. They want yeah. positivity and optimism. I sound like Gary Vee with that, but That's they want good, dude. Bring the and truth. Optimism. And yes, the occasional rant. But I would say clean out your Facebook okay. and start by adding every single real estate agent that you've ever met in your life. Yep. And then spend 15 minutes a day scrolling Facebook through the uh, suggested friends and add 20 new real estate agent friends every single day and do it for two years. And that's gonna take something that 99% of loan officers don't have called consistency. And if you're willing to be consistent with anything, that should be what it is. It's not, it's not, it's not easy to carve out 20 minutes in my day, but I did this morning. I'll tell you, I have 78 loans in my pipeline right now. <laughs> I've got 52 purchases closing next month and I've got 37 closing this month. I don't have time to breathe, but I spent 20 minutes this morning and I added 15 people on Facebook. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because the moment I stop growing is the moment I start dying. I love when people just blow up people's excuses and it's been a whole like day of it for me. I'm just like everyone, cause, cause I know everyone's excuse. I don't have the time. And then Andrew is like, I have a million loans in my pipeline. And they're like, Oh, <laughs> half the time. Yeah, but, but I'm sick of excuses too. Yeah. I, I, we all, we all can make excuses. Every one of us can, uh, for me, I'm just not, I'm not willing to entertain anything that is, that is even close to mediocrity in my life. Um, if it's not furthering my business or furthering my family, that comes secondary to everything else. Everything else is secondary to furthering my family or furthering my business. That's it. Those are my two priorities. Those are my two focuses. So I'll be more than willing to take a day off the water, off the boat and work. If my family's out of town, if so, I'll just work. I would rather work than go have a little fun by myself. But if my kids are home, I want to spend time there. It's, it's all about priorities, but God, if there's one word that this industry is missing is consistency. No doubt, dude. Loan officers habitually chase the next shiny object, the next app that's going to, to make their life easy, the next software that's going to change this. And they're just missing out on getting out and doing a old school grind hard work and have fun. Well, and that's that's why I wanted that's why I really wanted to highlight on this conversation, Andrew, because carving time to make human connection digitally is hard and it takes time. It, it does. takes time. And 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 it takes consistency and it takes hard work. And so all of a sudden you realize what the power is. If you can get behind it, you start to create like, like you have a kingdom and an opportunity that yields all this loan. That's this, all this opportunity now. And you're not out there. You're in control of your own destiny. Absolutely. And then, yes. And you know, it gets to the point where I, I, I'm just, I have to hire again now. Like I either, no I either have to hire or I just simply can't take on more business. And that's the best problem to have. You know, I would rather be stressed. 10 times over with having too much business than not having enough business. And, and I've been there. I've been there where my phone didn't ring for two weeks. I've been there with that level of stress of not knowing what the next paycheck is going to look like. And I'll take the stress <laughs> of, of having too much business all day long over the stress of not having enough business. And, and for that, I've learned one word and that's consistency. And that is to consistently post on Facebook, to religiously add people on Facebook, to consistently stay away from problem topics on Facebook. Um, I'm just I'm just not interested in controversy. I'm interested in portraying myself who I am, a good father, a good husband and a kick ass mortgage banker. So in our last five minutes, did you ever have any um, fear of video? I did. Oh, my God. You go back and look at my first few videos. They were miserable. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Um, and, and I actually, I, if I could give any advice on it, the yeah. the best win I've ever done for fixing my fear of video was live video. Oh, why? When, How you so? screw, when you screw up, you screwed up. You just keep going. You just power through. Where, whereas when I would record a video, I'd screw up 45 times. Yeah. I'd screw up over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I'd retake and I spend four hours where if I just go live, you eventually just learn to just, you mess up, you move on. Dude, And 
Yeah, live video um, kind of started for me back in um, 2017 when I went viral with one of the hurricanes. And then from there, it just it just kept going. I, you know, during March, when we had the complete market meltdown, I was out of town, bad time to take a family vacation. Um, but I started doing a live video every single day on Facebook. And these videos were getting five, six, 7,000 views on Facebook, like Jeez. 50, 60 shares by real estate agents of these videos, just talking about why interest rates are rising, what's going on in our markets. People are seeking an expert. And if you can truly uh, that's, you know, in the last couple minutes here, I touch on that. Um, yeah, please don't, don't half-ass this industry. Oh yeah. If this is an industry where you're, you're seeking to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Why would you not absolutely become the best at what you do? You know, go out and read the guidelines, spend your time actually perfecting your craft. Yes. Buy into MBS highway, learn what the markets, yeah. learn your candlestick patterns, be able to intelligently tell people why mortgage backed securities are going up or down. If, if when I, when a client calls me and he's like, Hey, I saw the interest rates have come down and I can ex explain to him, no, what you're seeing is news that was two weeks ago. And if you actually look at the MBS highway charts that I can send you, it's changed. It takes the wind out of people's sales. Uh, I lose maybe one deal a month to rate. How is that? I don't have the sharpest rates in the, in the tool shed. There's always some call center jockey that's going to have sharper rates out there. How am I doing it? I'm doing it by being an expert in it. And when you're perceived as the expert, and the only way you're really going to be perceived is if you school yourself to become the expert, that's when you're really going to start to get the eyes on you. Um, it's not just posting funny videos, but it's also educating people and putting real relevant information in their hands, especially like we were seeing in, in, um, in March when the market's going sideways, people are looking for relevant, true information content that they can rely on. And if that's you, you got an audience. Dude, I'm so impressed. It's, I, I I cannot wait to like re-release this or have people watch in the future or get it transcribed because you've dropped like bomb after bomb on this thing about just how to look. I mean, literally in, in, in 28 minutes, you know, if people would just copy what you're what you just told them to do, they can have the career of their life. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll probably close 350 units this year. I mean, is it worth and, it? And, and, and that's not to say that braggadociously. It's just. I, I actually sit in bewilderment and wonderment of how the hell this is all happening. <laughs> it's just happening. Like my phone just rings and I, I'm not prospecting. I'm not doing lunches. I'm not doing lunch and learns. I'm not doing CE classes. I'm just sitting in my desk all day answering the phone when it rings. But this is what I want everybody to hear because not only did Andrew do all the hard work, which is crucial. You can't, you can't skip your way. No one goes viral off one video. No one makes, you know, you have to, you have to earn your audience, earn your place, earn your seat at the table. But this is what it looks like when you have influence. And Andrew has influence. He's worked hard for it. And he's, by the way, he's, you heard him talk about how intentional he is and making sure he doesn't alienate people because his job is to help people get home loans. So why, he wants to do that for everybody. Why would you alienate people that you want to help and serve? Right. If, if, if you were a contractor, would you drive around with a Confederate flag in the back of your truck showing up to people's houses offering your services? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bad message. <laughs> no, I mean, you just, it would just be the dumbest thing on earth. So why, why would you do it on social media? Like, like it, it just, it just blows my mind what I see people post on Facebook. It's like, congratulations. You just turned off half your audience. Dude, they don't get it. They don't get it. <laughs> um, all right. So everybody on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, uh, all of Andrew's handles have been posted. Please go hang out and follow this guy. See what he's doing. I say this a million times, but if you want to get better, go follow what epic people are doing. See that? Uh, uh, good uh -huh. little thing. Uh, well, if you're, then, also, if you're on, if you get me on Facebook, follow, don't always add me as a friend if you're in the mortgage business, because I'm almost capped out at friends and I'm trying to leave room for my realtors. So follow me on Facebook. Don't add friends because I'm trying to keep room open. Andrew, you're the man, dude. Thank you for hanging out with us today. I cannot Thanks. wait to reshare this. Tons of, tons of amazing content, dude. You're the man. All right. Take care, buddy. See you, buddy. Um, man, dive into the water, team. Like how much more proof do you need? Dive into the water. I don't care where, but go all in and have some fun with your career, with yourself. Don't take yourself so seriously. At the end of all that stuff is unbelievable opportunity if you're willing to play in the space. I hope it brought you value today. Please go find these wonderful human beings online, connect with them, follow them, see what they're doing. Man, I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. I'll see you on the internet.